<laughs> Sorry. I wasn't pushing the right buttons, obviously. All right. It is time once again to learn a little bit more about sinkholes. We've been uh, privileged to be able to have some education. You know, you hear about sinkholes all the time. And to be honest with you, all we know about them is they are a problem. Frank Payonessa has been educating us, as has Mike Conkle, thank you, Mike. I couldn't remember your last name. And uh, they're here again. And today, very special guest, because this guy didn't even believe in you guys, right? Isn't that, <laughs> isn't that what you were telling me, Frank? Yeah. So he's on the phone right now. And tell me his name, Dan? Dan Sanders. Dan Sanders, okay. Well, let's not make anybody wait any longer. Good morning to both of you. And Dan on the phone, good morning to you as well. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Good morning. So tell me, I guess we'll just start with, with Dan. Dan, where are you right now? Uh, I'm in Spring Hill. Okay, Florida, you're, just uh, south of where you are. Where you are. All right, now, now, Frank was telling me you were a tough cookie. You were you were the guy who had to be convinced, right? Absolutely. Um, I had interviewed about six companies before I uh, before I chose Universal Soil Solutions. Okay, why were you looking for a a, a, a sinkhole company? Well, we I started noticing some cracks around my windows. I started noticing cracks around doorways. My front door started to get hard to open. Um, I had a very suspicious uh, depression uh, behind my uh, shrubs in the front of my house. And uh, I had recently changed out some bedding material from rock to mulch. Couldn't put, find any place to put the rock. So I said, well, let me put the rock in that depression behind my bushes. Right. I uh, filled up a 40-gallon garbage can with, uh, like, one-and-a-half-inch stone and dumped it into the depression, and in less than 24 hours, the pile was gone, literally oh my about God. six, eight inches below ground level, which kind of started to get me, you know, really suspicious because I started noticing other things as well right around the same time. My pool would empty water. Oh. You know, so it was was it a, a built-in pool? Signs. Yeah, yeah, mm. in-ground pool, and I started to lose probably about an inch of water a day. And there was a lot of other things right. that really kind of started to get me thinking. Okay, you know? so you're getting nervous. Now, before you tell us why you chose Universal Soil Solutions, let me ask you this. Why were you so skeptical? What is it about you, maybe, or about the world around us all? Because I'm with you. I, w I would have been saying, i got to find somebody, but who the heck do you trust? And and so why were you skeptical? Had you heard horror stories from other people? Absolutely. Well, I'm a real estate professional. I'm a commercial and residential realtor. So, you know, on a daily basis, I meet with people who are either selling their homes or buying homes or commercial properties and hearing their horror stories. So I knew at that point going in, now it kind of hit home that I really needed to kind of start to really educate myself on the whole entire process, you know, because you hear people, you know, they, you know, people actually physically get sick when they start to go through this process. I, I would imagine. And, I, I would too. Yeah. I can't blame you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and the, the, the situation with me was, you know, I need to educate myself and that's something that, you know, I'd like to kind of get out to your listeners is that, you know, a sinkhole is not necessarily a bad situation. You know, people fear the unknown. So it's our, it's their job to educate yourself through the process, know what's going on, and this way you know what to expect. There's no unknown. And denial, and that, yeah, and denial gets nobody anywhere. Absolutely, and you know, you can only deny it so far for so long when you know you've got serious issues in your home, and you know this is your your greatest single investment that a person makes, and now all of a sudden, if there's a threat to this investment, people start to freak out. It's like the end of the world to them. So, you know, if you educate yourself with the process and know what to do, it kind of comes off real. You know, you get you know what to expect. So, while you're wondering if you have a sinkhole, have, did, did any news stories come across your way, like the TV or the paper, or something that? You know, one of these horror stories, and where you saying, "Oh my God, I'm next." Well, yeah, you see that. You know, it's all over the news. Uh, unfortunately, for that gentleman in Hillsborough County who 
lost his life in a sinkhole. Unbelievable. You, see, yeah. you know, especially around this area that we live in, and, you know, in West Central Florida, there's, you know, it's quite prevalent. You know, people losing their homes, they're losing their, their you know, their, their, their investments, their personal belongings when these homes kind of give in. So, you know, it starts to work on your mind as to, you know, what do I do here, you know? So you put the feelers out, and you and you did this with skepticism, with with caution, because you didn't know who to trust. Um, Absolutely, I, I'm guessing you went to several different companies. What what were some of the feedback you got from the ones you chose not to work with, and what was the feedback you got from Universal Soil Solutions to make you choose them? Uh, it, it was more of you know after the whole testing process was done, the ground penetrating radar and the floor elevation surveys, and you know. You kind of, after you get the engineers, the final engineers report as to what needs to be done, you ask questions. What, you know, what needs to be done to my home? So you take all this information that you gather and you start your interview process. Some of them, some of the companies were, um, I, their application wasn't, wasn't, uh, what you thought it would be. You kind of draw a beat on people. If you don't feel comfortable when you have somebody sit down in your home, you know, you have to have that comfort factor. Right, you have right. to have that education. And a lot of people just says, well, we're just going to drill holes in the ground and pump a bunch of stuff down in there, and, oh, it's going to be okay. <laughs> to me, that wasn't good. I'm very skeptical. Oh, I don't blame I'm you. very inquisitive. So, so, so ju- just let me interject something right here. Our listeners have known me for as long I mean, I'm sure I've got listeners that have been on with us 10 years or more because I've been doing this 10 years. I want you all to know, this is not scripted. I have not, nothing in front of me telling me what to ask. Nothing, nothing guiding me so that this is an infomercial. It's information, and it happens to be a commercial because Universal Soil Solutions does pay for the time. But Frank has become a friend, as has Mike, but Mike stays in the mall more than, more than Frank. <laughs> and Frank comes in here, and, and, and Frank was telling me about you, Dan. And so when we heard your story, and he had a funny little story that you made the guys wait or something for an hour. And, and that's, you know, oh, yeah. that sounds like me. That's the way I would have been. I, I would have been the tough guy, too, trying to, to be sure that I had the right company to help me out. And you know what, Dan? If you yeah. could share that, because that, that's an important piece of, uh, of as far as company selection, regardless of the name associated with them. But if you could, uh, if you could translate that story, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that one of the criteria I used when I interviewed various sinkhole repair companies was my house had to look excellent at the end of every day. I wanted no depressions in my yard. I wanted nothing. I don't want equipment all over the place. I don't want, you know, big divots and ruts and piles of dirt and sand and anything unsightly at the end of every day. I want my job site clean. Yeah, right. right. And, you know, and, and the gentleman who came out to my house and everybody, you know, everybody down from the uh, field supervisors to crew chiefs, I made them all know at the end of every day, I want my property clean. I don't, I want it raked. I want it level. I want it clean. I want your equipment. Whatever can go off site, go off site. I don't mind you leaving some things on the property. And these guys would wait around. You know, I would get home sometimes late into the evening, and all of these guys would wait around for me. And some nights they actually worked by uh, headlight and spotlight, making sure my yard was raked, my walkways were hosed down, um, my house was clean. You know, the, the outside was sprayed down. Everything was clean before they left my side every day. And during this whole entire process, when it said that the, uh, the, the initial underground application was complete, you know, these guys waited around for me for probably about an hour and a half until I got home. And the gentleman who was the crew chief, uh, you know, called me up personally on my sofa and said, Mr. Sanders, I'm not going to leave until you get here, and I'm going to keep my crew here until you get home. We're going to walk the property. Anything that you do not like, we're going to address right now. So these guys waited around for about an hour and a half for me to come home and then walk the property with me. And I had these guys out there, everybody on the crew with a rake and a shovel, making sure my ground was level, everything was clean and neat. And then this was before I had another crew come out. You know, Universal Soil Solutions sent out a whole other crew to pressure wash my decks, 
Really? My house, oh, my wow. driveway, my walkway. So, you know, the final application after everything was completed, they sent a cleanup crew out and cleaned my house, which really impressed me. So it really kind of hit home to me that, you know, I made a great decision because these guys cared about what they did. They were very respectful. I said, listen, I have, I have a 15-year-old a daughter who's here at the house, and, you know, my wife, she's a stay-at-home mom. You know, I, you know, treat my house with respect. I don't want any loud music. And these guys were phenomenal. They came to work dressed, everybody dressed alike. No loud radios. They went in, they hit the property, and they, they did their job. They cleaned the property, and then every night when they left, my house was immaculate. So wow. I'm very, wow. very impressed with that. Wow. How long ago was this? Um, we actually finished pumping the underground about, I'd say about five months ago, because we're actually on the tail end of the cosmetic now, getting the inside of the house uh, finished now. So it was about five, six months ago that we, uh, that their, the, the final application of the underground repair was complete. So did you see uh, an immediate, um, end to the, to the depressions and the other evidence you, you mentioned earlier that was, that was making you, actually, yeah? Yeah, actually, uh, you know, the depressions went away. Uh, the cracks that had opened up actually came back together. Um, there were no new cracks that were done uh, that were uh, that had formed from you know uh, from the application. I mean, these guys educated me, the crew chief, and even the engineers. They educated me during this whole entire process. Okay, this is what we're going to do, Mister Sanders. We're going to put right. a transom out here. We're going to shoot a level on your house, and we're going to put these marks along your wall with the tape measure, and we're going to watch those marks. And once we see your home start to move a little bit, that's when the application is going to end. So, I mean, the education that I got through this whole entire process and actually saw how the how Universal Soil Solutions implemented engineers' requirements was real. I mean, they were, they were wonderful. I couldn't ask for anything more. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly saying that I'm, uh, that, was, that I'm a success story, but... Anybody can be a success story as long as you educate yourself about what's going on with the process. And, and that seems to be the key part of what Fra Frank and Mike have been trying to do on this radio sh station. Uh, they've been doing it every Monday now, I think for four weeks, five weeks. This or is so. the fourth week, yeah. Uh, Dan Sanders is who you've been listening to. He's down in Spring Hill. He's got a home down there. He saw great evidence that he ha might have a sinkhole. I, w I want you to address also how you, how, wh how you learned that you indeed did have a sinkhole because uh, we didn't kind of cover that part. But the big reason why, uh, why Frank and Mike have invited Dan to call in this morning was mostly to, I mean, this is a guy who didn't trust anybody. Right. Which I love that part of his story. Because right. you know what? Every listener is this way. Every, well, you, everybody. We're on this way. Right. And we've discussed this several different times. And all the, uh, all the half hour spots that we've done, all the commercials that have been running on WOCA for now the third month equal this. And this is basically what we've been trying to communicate to the folks in this county. Um, here's an example of that. And you're right. I love the fact that Dan hammered six different companies yeah, right. and then hammered us on the job. That's what it, that's what all of this is about. It's a, you know, he hit it. He said, your largest investment, there's no doubt about it. So the people that represent that investment on your property, uh, should really be vetted. And he definitely did that at the start, at the middle and at the end. And we appreciate that. And, and by the way, if I could just add it, it, it adds to what we already have learned about you guys is that whole idea that you respect other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, just the simple request, please no loud music. Remember, I got a 15 year old daughter and a wife in the house mm -hmm. there. You guys got to be respectful. I, I'm guessing that included no bad mouth to talking outside the window. Yeah, and that stuff is very cut and dry from yeah, our yeah. company. All well. right. So how did you learn that indeed you had a sinkhole? What was that process? Well, it, 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 upon initially calling my insurance company and discussing that I'm starting to have issues and starting to show evidence of a sinkhole, I'm having water leak out of my pool, my front door, very hard to open, cracks around windows, huge cracks in my walkways. And um, they had sent out an engineer. Now, the engineer did a couple of different processes. He did, uh, they did what they call a ground penetrating radar, where basically they put an electronic grid across you a lot and then run a sonic uh, machine across it that basically 
illuminates any kind of depressions in your property anomalies. They did a floor elevation survey, see mm-hmm. where your house is moving, how much is it moving, how much your elevation is off. You know, there are different variations in measurements. Um, besides for the normal augering, you know, uh, drilling holes to test in certain spots, doing hand augerings, they take all this information and an engineer compiles this into a, a report. And then once I received the report back from the engineer stating, yes, you definitely have a sinkhole. Uh, it's in these specific areas. Um, at that point, you know, they come up with a remedy as far as the repair. My, my repair was uh, underground uh, decompaction grout and chemical grout. Uh, you know, they, and they basically kind of give you a variant of, of how much material is going to be needed to make the repair. Uh, so, the, and, and like I said, the, you take all this information and you, you talk, you ask questions to the engineers. What is this? How is this? Why is this? Right, right. And how is this going to fix it? And he gives you their, you know, your recommendations. And then at that point, you know, another thing too that people need to know is that you do not have to go with the, with the repair company that is suggested by your insurance company. Right. You can choose your own company. It kind of gives you that next level of comfort to know that it's not somebody who you choose, it's somebody who I choose. Right. right. So and the, that's, that's, so after you had, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm sorry. But after you had the report, you, um, you had the company recommended to you by the insurance company and you chose not to go with them. Absolutely. Absolutely. They kind of gave me a list of companies and they were affiliated with engineers or whatever, you know, whoever they were that they said, you know, right. you can use this company. I, you know, again, I'm very skeptical. I'm, uh, I'm very right. inquisitive. So let me, I, let, I, I need to have that comfort. Let me ask Frank and Mike something. Uh, when you did the work at his hat, Dan's house, was it different than what the other, what the insurance company was recommending? In other words, did they recommend the right thing, or did you? No, guys- they recommend. They rec- we did exactly what the engineers, engineers report recommended. It's just they have a group of companies that they uh, put forward ahead of you know other companies, and that's okay. where that's where you know what Dan was saying. It comes down to who do I want on my home. I understand that this is the group you'd like me to look at first, and I may or may not. Um, but we followed and completed uh, the remediation of the pro- of uh, his home based on what the engineer's report had given us. Wow, wow. Well, I like the idea that you keep it clean at the end of the day, mm-hmm. uh, that you guys were respectful outside the windows, and, and he could trust you guys while he was not there. Right. You know, and well, I, I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to uh, upset anyone that we may potentially work for, but uh, we try to strive to make the home look better than it did. Uh, when we got there. Sometimes we can, and sometimes we can't because it's that pristine, but it won't right. look worse when we leave. That's just built into what we do. Are there certain challenge, sure. uh, cha- challenges when there's a swimming pool? Is that a different approach than a house? Is it different? Um, not really, because the majority of the homes that we've been working on have pools, and you know the remediation underneath the pool may be a little bit different because it's, it's yeah. you know done with chemical grout or what have you, but the approach is the same. And whether it has a pool or it doesn't, it's going to look spotless when we're done, whether that means the pool has to be uh, pressure washed, the deck, or what have you, yeah. um, the stuff that was there. And here's the other part that uh, Dan hadn't mentioned just because he probably just forgot, but there's 70 or 80 pictures that we take of the home when we get there. Ooh. We it's nonstop. You have uh-huh. a photo album in each file, really? inches thick, because we want to make sure we want to make certain. Okay, here's what it looked like on this date. We're leaving today. Let's hold them up, and that's literally what we do. We do have a phone call, and uh, we can take it right now. I hope you can hear the caller. Good morning. You're on the air. Thank you for calling. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, would there be any uh, future problems with building next to a, what they would call a retention pond? Um, that that's question is really kind of hard uh, to answer um, as to whether a retention pond would cause you uh, problems or not. It really just depends on what the underground soil that you're building on itself is like right now. Yeah, I, I mean, like right next to your property, you've got this uh, little lake every once in a while. You know, it, would it weaken the ground or something to, or maybe cause your, your property to lean that way or, or get uh, fragile? 
Uh, well, there again, it, it just depends on what the uh, situation underneath the surface is right now with the retention pond and your property. Uh, it wouldn't, yeah. uh, it, you know, that's one where you just can't give a yes or a no answer that, well, this will cause this or this won't. Um, it, it's yeah. really hard to tell, you know, what would uh, cause your property to change uh, right now from the way it is. There, evidently, there, there hasn't been any uh, cases of where uh, building next to a, a ten retention pond is called a problem, huh? Uh, well, you know, we have remedi remediated homes next to retention ponds, and I have seen homes that have been tested right next to a, a retention yeah. pond that didn't have a problem. So it, it's not like I can, can say, well, yes, that, that's going to cause you more of a problem than if it wasn't there. Okay. So what, what you're basically saying then is uh, you shouldn't really worry too much about uh, uh, build, buying or building a piece of property uh, next to a retention pond. Yeah, what we have found um, through all the inspections and testing that I've seen done is there's really not a set. You can't put a finger on something and say yeah. this is going to cause you a problem and this isn't. Okay, fine. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thanks you're for welcome. the call. Bye now. Dan, is there any, any telltale signs that you had any work done at all or is it all hidden? Actually, right now, you can look at my house, uh, and it doesn't look like there's nothing ever wrong with it. I mean, it, my cosmetic on my on the outside of my home is complete. My home was, the stucco was repaired, was painted. I had walkways redone, and, you know, my landscaping completely redone. My house looks completely different. You would never, ever, ever mm -hmm. know that, you know, they pumped 510 yards of grout and like 1,500 pounds of chemical ground under my house. You know, you would never ever wow. know that. People look at my house and my house looks like it's brand new. Like I said, I'm a real estate professional and I'm right. really picky about my property. And you know, my house, you never even know that my house ever had a sinkhole. I have, I have one question and it has to do with people who have pumps as opposed to city water. Does the application of the ground that he was just talking about affect a well, if somebody has a well? It can, um, if, especially if the well is close to the house, there's a good chance we'll plug it up. Uh -huh. um, right. Right. But that is something that if we do plug it up in the process, the insurance company or us will have it re-drilled after we're finished so that they do have a, a, a well system working after we leave. Yeah, that's an easy solution to that. I, but I, yes. just, I was trying to imagine the question that somebody might have <laughs> yes. uh, in that regard. Did that apply to you, Dan? Uh, no, actually, I do not have an irrigation well, and I'm on city water. Uh, okay. But I did have clients that uh, that had their home repaired that had an irrigation well, or were even their whole house was fed on a well, and that uh, basically that had happened. They had plugged the aquifer, and they just went in and they redrilled a fresh well, and found that they went a little deeper, found a better water source. So in the end, it might have been a tragedy up front. But at the end of the day, their well was redrilled, and they actually got a better quality of water. So, are you guys limited at all by the insurance amount? Or like, do you have like, let's say, a certain dollar amount you have to stop at, or do you just do it until it's done? The insurance company, what we we will go off of the engineer's estimate, and it is just that it's an estimate um, because we don't know for sure when we start pumping exactly how much grout it's going to take. Right. Um, if if we get to the end of the estimate and it still needs more grout, the engineer is going to have us to continue to pump because he wants to make sure the job is fixed sure. yeah, right. properly and he's he is confident with what we've done. Uh, so uh, having it just an estimate is not a problem. We will keep going if we need too it's it's not a, a problem most insurance companies i mean they want it fixed properly they don't want to be back so if it takes more fine we go ahead and put more in it's that integrity thing again right mm. uh well dan good good for you I'm, uh, are your neighbors worried have they have they been uh, wondering about their own homes actually yeah i've got a couple of the neighbors that um have tested i i live on a corner lot to late that the, the neighbor behind me um, is having their home tested uh, f uh, through their insurance company. And I believe my neighbor on the one side of me is doing that as well. Uh, so, the, you know, there's it, been a lot of activity in my neighborhood lately. I mean, over the past probably 18 months to two years, there's been a lot of testing that has gone on in here, and there's been a lot of repair. So, you know, it's uh, unfortunately, it's not isolated to any one specific area. It's just... Mm -hmm. 
you know, rampant all over the county, basically all over the, the, the central part of the state. So right. I, just, I said, in my business, I see this a lot. Dan, well, well, there are so many reasons why your call is such a great call on today's show. And just for the listeners, again, this is not scripted. I, I mean, I have free will to ask anything I want. There's nothing in front of me saying to ask these questions. Of course, it is to try to promote universal soil solutions. The best thing, though, to just do what Dan did, be skeptical, ask the questions, come in and visit Mike and, and, uh, and Frank and whoever Get else. educated. Yeah, go to the... That's what I did. Honestly, guys, that's what I did. And that's something that I want your listeners to know. Besides of being skeptical and, answer, and asking a ton of questions and, and educating myself, I popped in at the office. Mm-hmm. We know I'm not un, un, uninvited, unasked. Just, I just literally <laughs> found their address, pulled up in front of their building, and walked in the door. I'm here. You know, I got to, I got to know the crew outside that I got to. Meet oh, really? Oh, that's office. cool. Yeah. Oh, you're my kind of guy. So right here, right here at the mall is where you can start because because that's where there is a a kiosk set up right just outside the food court, just a stone throw if you could throw it through the window from where we're broadcasting. Do you want to give any phone numbers, you guys? Any websites? Um, Eight seven seven five one nine two seven seven seven, and the URL website is www.uss-sinkhole.com. Uh, Daniel Sanders, thank you for being on the air with us today. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, for Dan. I appreciate it. Frank thank Vanessa you. and Mike Conkle, thank you. Thank you for thank what you're you. doing. You're making me worried now. i got to go. <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, we'll take a little break. We'll be right back. Thank you all. Thank you. It was We're great. listening to WOCA News Talk 1370, Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics. Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. Legally Yours, brought to you by Fuller & Fuller Attorneys at Law. On the air every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. with John Fuller, a board-certified civil trial lawyer for over 25 years. John welcomes your questions from business to complex family matters to legal disputes. So tune in every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. for Legally Yours with John Fuller, right here on WOCA 1370 a.m. and 96.3 FM, The Source. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing. Our tractor services include bush hog, disking, front end loader, box blade, and stump grinding. We also have zero turn mowers for the smaller paddocks, IOAs, fence rows, and lawn care. Fence row spraying is also available for weed control. We are licensed and insured. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440 or online at Powell Gene, G-E-N-E, 